I've really been digging into the tones of the Mesa Boogie Mark 525, and I've also seen a lot about the cab clone included in the Mesa Mark 525, how the cab clone sucks, it doesn't sound good, it's unusual, it's too brittle, it's too noisy. And today I want to find out, is the cab clone on the Mesa Mark 525 really as bad as everyone is saying? And I want to know why. Why is it that every single video for the the cab clone is a he, in a heavy metal context? Will that matter as to this mystery of whether the cab clone is really any good? Come join me. Let's find out. So what I really wanted to do here is be very complete, uh, which is something I have not seen anyone do with a cab clone so far uh, on the Mesa Mar 525. So what I'm seeing is that there's three ways you can use the Mesa Mar 525, and it's very important. Each of the three ways is important. Okay, so the first way is you use it in a live performance context. That's where I'm familiar with it. Uh, the second way is in a recording context, in a recording studio to, for your songs. Uh, the third way is you're just jamming at home. You need a low volume way to play your amplifier because you can't go and blast a 4 by 12 You don't live in that situation. You can't even blast a 1 by 12 You just don't live that way. So you need just some low volume jamming. My experience with it is in a live performance context. Whenever I've used it, um, you know, the sound guy just plugs in a mic cable and goes, he treats it like a direct box. And, uh, you know, I've asked them like, well, how's the sound? And they said, oh, it's fine. It works. You know, it, it was no problem. Um, and I monitor off my speaker cab. So I've really never gone in and uh, really given a good performance just monitoring uh, the cab clone. Um, uh, the one time, actually, that's not true. The one time I did, the guy operating the board didn't know how to operate the board. So he was having a really tough time getting a sound. So I kind of just um, faked it. Nevertheless, I usually monitor the uh, the speaker cabinet, so I don't really know how the cab clone sounds in the front of house, how it sounds to an audience. I've even had a couple of times where the sound guy said they went ahead and mic'd up my speaker cab and took the cab clone at the same time and tried to mix it that way. So that's certainly an alternative there. Uh, what I can tell you, though, is that the cab clone, especially when you have uh, high gain tones, the volume, uh, the output is very hot. So if you have a sound person who's really uh, doesn't know how to operate a board, uh, they're going to run into some troubles because they're going to have um, they, they need to understand about gain staging and that the output is hot, hotter than just a, a person softly singing into a microphone. So that can cause some issues and make the cab clone sound bad because the person at the board doesn't really know what they're doing. So there could be some problems there. I'm going to use this in this video in a live playing context. I'm going to save recording context and in a low volume jamming context for a different video. So this, I'm what I'm doing is I'm setting up my Mesa Mark 525 um, like I would if I was performing live, meaning I'm in a space, I'm here in my room, and I'm going to set up uh, the knobs to where I think the Mark 525 sounds good here in the room. So um, it would be the same way if I was playing live. I just set it up for the room. How you know I have a basic idea and then I tweak it for uh, the sound of the room. Uh, also, I'm going to try three things. You're going to hear the um, clean channel. You're going to hear a crunch, and you're going to hear a lead. So uh, I'm going to show you my settings. So that's all I'm going to try is a clean, a crunch sound, and a le high gain lead sound. We're going to use those and find out how it sounds compared to a mic'd up uh, cab. Okay, now as far as the cab goes, I'm using a Mesa Boogie Lone Star 23 cabinet. It's got a Celestian Black Shadow or MC90 1 by 12 um, and I'm using an SM57. 
I've got it mic'd up straight up to the center of the speaker cone, or the speaker cone or the dust cap. It's right in the center. And it's about maybe a half inch away from the grill cloth. Basically, I'm setting it up the way a sound guy would at a live venue. Gen at, you know, whenever you're doing that dumpy bar tour and, you know, you got these hacks that are doing the uh, sound, you know, they kind of just stick a microphone or you got some guy subbing for the night and they just pretty much stick a microphone in front. They might use a flashlight or their phone and they say, oh, there's the speaker. Let me just stick my SM57 right in front of the uh, speaker cap, um, you know, whatever right there. And then the rest I'll correct at the board, get it nice sounding at the board. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just keeping it really simple right in the middle, just you know, like I said, about a half inch from the grill cloth. The cab clone, by the way, has two settings. You could either do an open back or a closed back setting. I'm going to use the open back sitting setting for this entire video because I want to compare apples to apples. I'm using the the Mesa Lone Star 23 is a one by 12 open back cab. Now, here's the thing. We've got to be make really sure we know what we're talking about when it comes to the cab clone. I don't know what the cab clone is emulating exactly. I know it's supposed to be a mic'd up speaker cab, but I don't know which cab. I don't know which speaker. I don't know which microphone. I don't know how they placed the microphone. Did they? Is it direct? Did they have it off axis? Is it placed uh, off center? I don't know what they did. Was it multi mic I don't know. I'm guessing it's a single mic, but we don't know exactly what this sound is capturing or supposed to emulate. So let's just start with that. The second thing is there is a speaker on and a speaker off position for the cab clone. And the speaker on is just what you think. I can uh, play my amp as usual through the speaker speaker cabinet, my Mesa Lone Star 23. Uh, but when you turn it to the speaker off position, look at the manual, you guys. Read the goddamn manual. It tells you right there that it puts a resistive load uh, and that's what your amp sees. Your amp sees this resistive load and plays with that. Because in case you didn't know, a tube amp needs to have a load. Either the speaker cabinet or you buy some sort of load box. Uh, so in this case, it is not a reactive load box. You may have heard this term. This is a resistive load box. This is what the manual says. So you put the speaker off position. Your cabinets that you're using won't play, and the amp won't see your speaker cabinet as the load. It will see the resistive load in the cab clone. So what we want to do is this. We also want to make a comparison. How does the cab clone sound? when I'm playing with the speaker cabinet. So I'm monitoring the speaker cabinet and the sounds, and I'm gonna go ahead and record the sound of the cab clone while my speaker cabinet is also connected and playing. And we're gonna compare and, cr and contrast. How does the mic cab sound of the cab clone with the speaker cabinet connected? And you've got the switch in the speaker on position. But I also wanna compare how does my mic'd up cab sound to the cat with a cab clone in the speaker off position where I'm not where my speaker cabinet is not playing so in that case I had to use my uh, monitors that I have over here my uh, little speaker monitors for recording I had to use that to hear what the cab clone was playing so this is a very big difference and I, I've I see that uh, no one in any other video has really tried to make that comparison that is there a difference in the cab clone and how it sounds compared to not having a speaker load as well and having a speaker load as well. And I learned this from Pete Thorne because he did this on a different uh, video about uh, a reactive load saying that there is a difference when you use the speaker as the load. Uh, what you have for the IRs or the speaker, the mic speaker emulation, it's a different sound, it's a different feel when you have a different load. So this is gonna be interesting, you guys. All right, let's do it. Let's. We've got this stuff out of the way. Let's go ahead and listen to a clean sound. Again, we're gonna um, compare a mic'd up cab with the cab clone output. So obviously I have my speaker cab connected. Let's give a listen. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
And now we are going to do a crunch sound. Again, mic'd cab versus the cab clone while I have a speaker cabinet connected. <laughs> And lastly, a high gain tone. Again, I got to keep reiterating this stuff so we know we're comparing apples to apples. Miked up cab with my SM57 compared to the cab clone output with the speaker cabinet connected. So now let's listen and compare the mic'd up cabinet with my SM57 and compare that to the sound of the cab clone in the speaker off position. So there is no speaker cabinet connected and playing. So it's a little different because now I'm not listening to my speaker cabinet. I'm listening to my monitors here. That's how I'm listening to the cab clone. So let's compare mic up cab to the uh, cab clone without the speaker load. It's using the resistive load. Clean sound. <laughs> Okay, the next one, the crunch sound, again, mic'd up cab to the cab clone in the speaker off position. So I'm not using the speaker cabinet for this. Let's listen. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Okay, lastly, a high gain tone. Um, mic'd up speaker cabinet, compare it to the cab clone output in the speaker off position. There is no, the amp is not seeing my cat, my speaker as a load. It's using the cab clone's internal resistor as a load. Let's compare them. Okay, so one thing I have to say is you have to ask yourself a question. How does it feel when you play? I got to tell you, there's a big, big difference when I play with the amp in the room. How I set my the knobs, how I'm going to set them is is its own special thing in this room. If I were to go onto a stage, I would have to tweak them a little bit for that stage. And of course, my playing is going to be different when I'm listening to the speaker cab and I'm able to blast it a little bit. Um, my playing is different. Just doing this little experiment here, this video, I got to tell you, it is a very big difference when I didn't use the speaker cabinet and I use my monitors here. When I was using the cab clone without the, the uh, speaker cabinet and I listened to the monitors, the feel was very different. I I didn't I felt like my plan was sloppy. Um, I tried my best to give you guys uh, an accurate reflection of the sound, but it, it's a little tougher to play with that. Now I didn't tweak it so it would sound good in those monitors. So that could be an option, but that will be a different video. And another thing I want to talk to you about is practicality when it comes to the cab clone. Even if you think this cab clone on the Mart 525 uh, sucks, there's a practical point too, which is that the cab clone comes included with the amp. You don't need to buy a separate box. You don't need an extra cable to go to the separate box. Some of these load boxes that have IRs in it, uh, like whether from two notes, or uh, Sur, uh, or the uh, Universal Audio Oxbox, um, you know, you have to have an extra cable because you need to connect your speaker output to that box and then connect either a mic cable or a line cable over to your audio interface or wherever it's going to go, mixing boards. So you have to have that extra device. And uh, the other thing is um, you're going to have to, most of them, you're going to have to plug it in. Not all of them. I, I know there's some uh, load box IR or sp mic'd up, uh, speaker emulated things that don't require power or might require phantom power. But a lot of these things, again, two notes, um, the Sur, the Sur Active, uh, you know, you have to have a power supply to power that up too. So uh, depending on your situation, maybe that's not very practical for you. You just want to play the amp and the cab clone on the Mesa Mar 525 gives you something. So something I want to try before I finish off this video is this concept of blending the mic'd up cab with the cab clone. Because like I said, a couple of sound guys said that's what they did. So first of all, there's a little bit more to, to that because the mic'd up with the SM57 mic'd up, and the cab clone are going to be out of phase. If you don't understand what out of phase means, 
look this up on Google. You can even look it up here on YouTube, what it means phasing between mics or between a mic and a direct source. So the cab clone is a direct source, just like a DI box. And the uh, SM57 is mic'd up, so sound has to travel through air first before it gets uh, converted into electricity and you can hear it. So you're already gonna have the two signals out of phase. That may not be a bad thing uh, because uh, phase shifting is used as a creative technique and a lot of rock music uh, was created by engineers and producers, you know, putting things slightly out of phase to get a certain uh, tone that worked. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here, and I don't wanna play, this video is not about phase. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend the two sounds. And what I did is I put them in phase. And that's a whole other video. That's something else about how to take two sources out of phase and put them in phase. So I went ahead and put the cab clone and the SM57 there in phase. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend them together and uh, you let me know what you think of the sound. This is so, uh, that's what's here. It's gonna be um, all three sounds, but with a blended cab clone, blended SM57. So uh, clearly what's the cab clone sound is while the speaker cabinet is connected. All right, let's go for it. <laughs> Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed the video over here. I I have to say that um, blending the two sources, the cab clone and the mic'd up speaker cab, I found actually pretty good. Like I would not have a problem if the sound person blended those two. If he adjust, uh, if he adjusted for the phase, and he blended the two for my live sound, I actually wouldn't even have a problem if he didn't mic up the cab and just use the cab clone instead to the front of house for a live performance. I really would be okay with that. The sound actually, in that context, it's actually pretty good and does the job, provided I have the speaker cabinet uh, connected. Now, here's my opinion on the cab clone when it uses its own internal uh, resistive load. Uh, I would not use that in a live context. It is not inspiring to play. It's, it does give you a sound. And maybe, maybe if I were to go in and start tweaking a little bit uh, the settings to get it to sound better in a live context, it might be usable. Um, it is kind of nice just to bring the amp and your guitar plug in and play that way. So that's very practical. But honestly, there is something so inspiring when you have a speaker cabinet blasting away at you while you play. It's, it's a very different feeling. And if you've never done that, I highly recommend you do something like that. That old school way works. It's just an awesome sound. So there you go. That's my opinion on it. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Uh, I'm going to do a different video, like using the cab clone and recording contexts. All this video does is it doesn't find you the absolute perfect answer. We just come up with more questions on what we could possibly do. So thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe if you, and also hit the notification bell so you can be notified the next time I put out a video. Thank you so much you guys for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and eye and ear opening for you. See you soon.